How we doing everyone, MJS Find a Tech back again. Um, here, here's kind of what I want to do in this video. Really just want to talk about my restructuring of Find a Tech as far as like the service offering goes. Been working on it for a couple months now, really starting to get happy about where it's going, where it's headed. I think the the model itself is gonna make a lot of sense. I don't know if there's a lot of other people necessarily doing it out there. I'm sure that other people have different opinions on it. But there's a lot to unpack and it's not fully done. So I'm just going to try to give like a lay of a lamb even just for myself to kind of see where I'm at. And then hopefully I can, uh, you know, wrap it up here. Um, I, hopefully as soon as possible within the coming weeks because I would like to dive back into selling. And that's actually the reason that I wanted to kind of uh, just talk uh, today on this video is because I have some opinions on the way that WordPress uh, like web designers, like how those agencies like function. And I've taken bits and pieces from different other people that are successful in this area. And I've tried to mold them into, into something, uh, that I think will be successful. So I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff. It's all going to relate to a service offering though. And, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you get something out of this. So here's, the impetus of this whole thing is like we need to clearly define our service offering and product offering. Uh, it'll allow us to better communicate our value with pro and our proposition with uh, defined specific processes um, for each service that we provide. Like we need to have all that kind of done there. And I just saw some other random stuff, you know, probably written throughout here, but we need to build like synergist. We build synergistic website ecosystems. That's some buzzword stuff. I have more things out there, there. but the idea is you got to know what you do. You have to clearly define it. You have to know how much it, how much it's going to cost people. And then you have to kind of like, not necessarily sell it to people. We're not even at that stage, like mentally, in a sense. People need these items. We're not selling them things that they don't need. They do need these. So it's not like a hard, difficult thing to sell in general. Your offering just has to, your offering, like the value that you offer just has to match whatever you're kind of, or at least make sense to what you're charging. So as a quick context the reason that i had this reframing was because i was charging people one not not nearly enough for development i've done so many different like types of things in in a small period but i've done projects where like really large projects where i didn't even take any development costs and i just charged like a, a somewhat larger monthly fee don't ever do that big project didn't take anything for development charged 500 dollars a month right out of the gate really bad idea because you have no idea of the scope, you don't have like a number matched with the the, the development time frame, um, and the, you know the scope of the development. Don't do that. Seriously, don't do that. It's a bad idea. Um, the other things that I've done are like price point wise, and these are tough because I'd have to like give you a list of the things that I was doing for these prices. But if you're building like a solid WordPress website, I'm not just talking like a five pager with no dynamic content. If you're starting to get into like post the custom post types, custom fields, um, you know, different like almost automation type things or like, you know, customizing the dashboard at all um, so people can use it on the team. I mean, you need to start thinking about getting in the, at minimum, the, the like, I would say, Okay, depending on the place you live in the world, okay, but I'm just, you know, I'm speaking specifically for the United States, you got to be over $5,000. You have to be. Um, where I'm trying to shoot for is even is even higher than that, but you have to be over $5,000. The monthly thing, I think it's a really good idea to have monthly recurring revenue because it gives you a better idea, builds relationships longer term with people, you can add, st you can still add more value. And a lot of it is kind of passive or you can set it up to be passive. But that, in that regard, I don't want to go too far off topic because I talk about all this for days, but I want to try to stay on the, the actual thing that we're talking about. The, the daily, or I'm sorry, the monthly retainer, don't call it a retainer, but the month the monthly fee is got to be for certain things. And we'll get to that the way that I want to redo, do it now because the, here's, here's the trouble that I've had in the past. And maybe you've had this as well. You see all these people out here, these web developers, that have multiple plans. Maybe they have like three plans or six plans or whatever, and it's like different um, numbers per month. And what does that number always include? Always, always, always. What does it include? It includes hosting, it includes maintenance, security, like those types of things. 
Here's what I've found, and maybe other people have a better strategy for this. What I've found is that you're dealing with a business owner that's probably in like some other random you know industry or whatever, right? They don't, and you can communicate this value proposition better to them, but you don't fully understand, or they're not ever exactly gonna fully understand what that value is. So I'll show you in a second here, one of the ways that I've decided to make that support plan or that care plan or whatever you want to call it like way more valuable like tangibly valuable at least things that like they would understand and and it's things that like as a business owner I'm not, like as a service provider I'm spending more money to make it better for them and charging more money as a result so that's kind of what I think if you're if you're stuck charging like 50 100 or 200 dollars a month I think that something like I have thought of here might might help you um, the last thing is the growth plan, which I haven't fully thought about, but that would be layering on like actual growth, like SEO, conversion rate optimization, more of that. And that's like, I would say the next tier. Um, that's not like you would have to develop a website, then you'd have to support it. And then if you really want to grow it, then you could grow it. So that's that's kind of the, the thought process there. There's a little bit more about digital, digital strategy. I'm not really going to talk about the other two right now because that's kind of like a separate... Uh, side of the business but for anybody watching if you own an agency or you just do this freelance or whatever I would consider like thinking about this in this way and I'll make more content on this but let, let's just kind of go through this um, sort of in a sense just to kind of get a, a frame of mind so when you have a new business come to you or you go to somebody the first thing I want to say is there's two I, I'll make a whole life cycle um, you know, almost like flow chart of like the way that I do this. I have one. I'll make a video on that. But, but to make it real basic, the one piece that I that I left out as we as we move into like a a pseudo pricing and like how it would go is you're either gonna know what the hell you're doing or you're not. Um, and that's too generalized. But what I mean by that is you're either gonna have done it before and you're gonna have a good idea and the client's gonna know roughly what they want or, or enough enough for you to like fill in the blanks or you're gonna have no idea. If you have no idea and the client has no idea, what you may want to do, which I've had like limited success in doing this, is something called paid discovery. I'm not gonna go super in depth, look it up because it's a really good concept, but it's only really... You could probably do it every time if you were really good, but it's only like really, really valuable in certain instances. All paid discovery is, think about like a 10,000, I'm gonna use simple numbers and make this real easy. Let's say a, you think a build of a standard website is $10,000. If if the whole website developed is $10,000, that's what you would charge, then would you have to do it in, in, a, in a situation where you don't know if you'll get to the development stage because you don't know exactly what you need to do? You would need to pitch them, you could, you could pitch them on, one a one thousand dollar product or service called paid discovery and what that is is you just you do everything that you would do in your job like if you were just if you were building that website you do everything that you were going to do but you don't actually build it you just kind of like map it out like maybe on a document you know with a bunch of resources and, and stuff and like this is exactly how i do it just talk through almost and write it down not actually speak to them write down everything in your mind that you would do to build this website like i would use wordpress i would you know make custom post types for this i would use these different plugins for this. I mean, I've never even really done it. I could think of how to do it and I would actually really enjoy doing that. I think it'd be a really good exercise, but in a nice way to make $1,000 because you're not actually building it, you're just documenting it really. But the idea would be that you hand them a full report and then they have three options. You hand them a full, you, they hand you $1,000, you hand them a full report of, every, of the way you would build this. You have a conversation with them maybe. And there's three options coming out of that meeting, we'll say. Option number one is they abandon the project entirely and, and they and you get $1,000 for doing the work that you did. And they just, you know, whatever. They realize it's too much or too little or whatever. They don't, they don't want to do it anymore. But everybody wins though, right? Because everybody got paid and everybody got the information they need. Option number two is that they paid for that, but they don't like the quote that you're giving them. They don't like the way you're building it or whatever. And they can, but they they have that as a, a deliverable. They have that, that, poor, that, you know, folder or whatever. They can take that and they can go down the street, they can go to Fiverr or whatever, and they think like, okay, I really like this plan, but I don't like your price, but I paid for the plan. So they go to somebody and they say, all right, hey, can you do this for $2,000 or whatever? And like, that's fine. That You got paid for your time for your time and your effort for that thing, and you know they got their thing, and that's that's option two. So they, they continue, but they don't use you. Option number three is the one that you really want in that case. 
and probably the one that would work out the most, I would think, unless like the project is doesn't make sense for you to do. And that is that, you know, it's like they already paid a thousand dollars for you to make the plans and they're like, okay, let's continue and let's build this thing. And maybe the quote has changed depending on what you found. I don't know. I'm not saying that like you should tell them what it would cost because you wouldn't know what it would cost. But um, there's a lot of different ways to handle that. Maybe you could say that you, you, you could say in the beginning, like if you do pay discovery, then you get that money off of your project. But there's, I mean, you could just kind of play with the numbers for it to make sense for you anyway. But um, the point is that that's the third option is like, okay, I really enjoy working with you so far. Like, thank you for so much for this plan. I really like this. Let's continue. It seems like you know what you're doing or you have a good plan to do this. What's this going to cost? And let's continue. So that's the third option. That's paid discovery. Not going any deeper than that. But my point in saying that is before you get to the next stage, that's something that you might want to uh, consider doing depending on where you're at in that life cycle or whatever or in that or in that the knowledge of the project that you have in front of you. Let's say you get to website development though. I'm not going to read through all this because I don't know exactly like I'm not just going to read this off. I'm just going to give some highlights of this idea here. And obviously this is going to continue to evolve. So I'll make more content on it when it is. You want to have like kind of like a, a standard or typical pricing from what I've found. There's a, there's many different ways to do this. I could I could list you five different ways that I've seen successful companies do this, but this is the one that I'm kind of going with. You could, well, let me back up first. You could do the tiered bucket thing that everybody sees, like the three plans or the four plans or whatever. It's like, okay, we'll build your real basic site for $1,000 and charge by page or whatever. We'll build you a, a little bit better site that's less templated for five thousand dollars and then fully custom is 10 15 or whatever i i have no interest in doing that personally i think there's too many people that are making simple sites so i tried i'm trying to go into like the next tier and when you start to get into that next tier i know web development agencies that are charging 50 to a hundred thousand dollars for a website i am not trying to play in that ballpark yet even though i do believe that i could create a website that is of that caliber there's a little bit of nuance to that because those companies have like, you know, 50 to 100 employees potentially. So there's a little bit of nuance. I'm one person right now. We'll get there. But there's no reason that as a one one man shop, you can't charge those prices if you want to. But there's absolutely there's and there's there's certainly no reason you can't charge 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars like in that range, especially if the value matches that price and they're willing to actually pay that. So my point is here with the website development, you know, after you get past that pay discovery and everything, let's say you're actually going to quote somebody on this stuff. I'm not telling you exactly what prices to charge or anything. You have to like really feel that out. But like as an idea for me, that's really where I'm trying to play that like 10 to 50 on the, on the high end, but nothing super small because I've just realized that everything that I build, I have enough, every website that I could possibly build is at least $10,000 in value. Like the ideas that I could provide and the way that I would want to build something. I don't want to build those smaller sites. I want to build things that like are um, extremely uh, like um, I don't want to say the word templated because they're not they're not the, the design is not templated, but the like high usage of custom post types, um, automation as much as possible, um, you know, just well thought out and well structured in those regards. I'd have to show you some examples to really get the idea, but hopefully you kind of understand. I'm not copying and pasting shit from page to page. I am making it so everything is uniform. Everything's cohesive. It looks like a big brand built this website is the way that I kind of think about this. So that's kind of the position I'm in. Maybe adapt it to your position. But generally, I'm going to read through some of this goal stuff here because I can't remember exactly what it is. But like they're a busy, they're a busy business owner, right? Building a website for them should not be time consuming. And we, and, and you as the, you and we have the, the, kind of pronouns are like all mixed up mixed up mix mixed up because i'm trying to say it to you the listener but like so I'm gonna, i'll just do it as them so you are a busy business owner building a website should not be time consuming for you we want to limit the amount of friction like lower it as much as possible it's extremely key you need a website that makes your business more efficient but you should be focused on building you should not be focused on actually building the website so we're great at building websites we use a done for you approach as much as possible so like there's there's a spectrum here and this is where you would give it to them like done 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 for you versus like do it yourself and there's a middle one called like done with you so all that means is like you do everything we do everything or in the middle it's like kind of like a combination that's that's it's not like black and white like that but but think of it as like 
everything that you do, think of it on that spectrum. If it's, if it's done for you, if I do something for you completely, it's gonna cost you more money than if you did it yourself. That's like a generality, right? So think of it like that when you're pricing and when you're doing things. So we'll only ask you for the for the info that you that only you can provide, um, and if they want to get involved more, great. But you know, like maybe that's not something that you kind of want to do. I just the point of point of me running through that little thing there is a strategy that you could implement is put positioning yourself as the authority and not having them do anything that they don't absolutely need to do. Like for instance, if you're writing a story page, you probably don't know enough about their business to write a story page on your own. You can't even, you don't even have enough information to put into chat GPT without getting information out of them, right? So you need that information from them, right? But you could do so much of the stuff on your own. Like you could do, if they don't, if, if they just, if they trust you and they realize that your judgment is the, is the better of the two of the two of you probably because like you know websites and you like can you can do a lot of research on their industry and just see what works what doesn't work i mean you have to be good you can't be lying right but um but that's what i mean is that you have if you establish that authority and you establish you as the uh the expert in that field then you can take a lot of that off their plate a lot less stress for them and they'll be willing to pay you more because it's done for them right so that's the kind of the the idea there um just a little bit you know more here so like Establish like your actual value so they get a fully customized WordPress website, you know, full UX, UI design, generated copy based on like things that they have. So either use a copywriter, I'm using ChatGPT now, depending on what you put in there, it's amazing what comes out. So that's an idea. You can offer image sourcing, you can customize the dashboard um, and give them something so they have something uh, like training on their end, you know, um, uh, like just make it so because that's another that's another thing we'll get into that but you you need to make a decision on do you want to be the website manager or do you want to be like the website uh like webmaster in a sense that's the the terminology is bad there i haven't fully figured out but my point is like think about this early and we'll come we'll come back to it when we actually get to this point you have to ask yourself do you want to be the person that they that when when a when a new blog post needs to go up or more importantly if you have like a group site like a membership site like if somebody's credit card doesn't work right like a member's credit card doesn't work like do you want to be the person that gets called and fixes those things I'm not saying it's right or wrong I'm saying you have to understand if you want to be that person or not if you are that person make sure that you are charging appropriately for being called at whatever time or you know what instance or whatever when that when the thing is like broken or not working again it's a good value a prop but if you don't want to do that then train them on that and 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 set the expectations this is all about setting expectations so just think about those things early on or if you've been through them think about like well this sucked or this didn't suck i would get paid to do this i, I would never want to do this even if i was getting paid those types of questions ask ask yourself those and then understand that as you move through this process like this is how this is going to go so i need to train them on this or they don't need to worry about this i'll take care of it but i'm charging them for this think about that and then a website owner's manual is kind of like i would i haven't fully implemented that but i have to a certain degree i'm gonna, i want to do that for every single person because here's the thing when somebody buys a car, they could work on it themselves. You know, they could take it back to the shop or whatever. But there's always like a manual. Again, stuff's online nowadays. But the idea is like there's a manual, like giving tutorials or detailed breakdown of like the special, especially is the thing. There's two things, these second items here. Detailed breakdown of all the new tools. When you build a new website and you actually don't think about like limitations and you think about like, oh, maybe we want Calendly now or maybe we want, you know, some other, you know, platform that integrates with something, you might need to buy things they might need to buy things but you buy them on their behalf like they charge them for it or whatever the point is that if there's premium plugins that they're paying for it they don't understand what they do they don't understand what they're paying for necessarily you have to educate them on that and make a damn list of what what it is if you want to put passwords on it you can again it's a, it's a little it's a little insecure sure but but you know, if you like the logins to it, at least tell them what it is and what they're paying for, and how much it is, and how often they're you know paying for it or whatever. That is super crucial um, because they need to understand that this is the whole package of the website. It, they can you know if they if you have it so like month to month where they can leave you at any time, this is everything that they need to be concerned about right here. And that actually adds more to your value when you tell them this, and it's like, 
okay, wow, they're handling a lot of stuff. They set up a lot of stuff. You know, just I think it's valuable. So definitely something like that. And the other thing is contingency plan, just in case for heaven forbid something happens to you, can they get into their website? Can they transfer it to another developer? Uh, that's a huge thing that nobody thinks about. So think about that. That's, that's slightly more into the next thing. This video is already getting long. I apologize, but I think there's a lot of good info here, and this is actually helping me kind of get back into the, the kind of the, the rhythm of, of thinking about all this. So that's good. Tell them what's not included. Further development. Um, you know, so like once you have to have, I've, I've made this mistake too many damn times. When you have a development window, let's say, like proposal to launch of the website, that is what the development fee is for. Let's make it $10,000. Let's say you're building a 20 page website and you're going to do it. You say you're going to do it in two months and you know, that's, that's, there needs to be the milestone of signing the proposal and the kickoff invoice and then launching the website and make sure that they pay you before you launch the website. That's what it is. They pay you, you launch it, you connect the domain. That's it. That is the $10,000 in this case. There is no more. They don't get anything else for the $10,000. The reason they don't is because it is so easy to get just destroyed in, in additional development. It's so easy. Like people think that things are easy. I, I don't, I don't want to stunt ideas or stunt growth of a business. I just need to make sure that I'm being compensated accordingly is the, is the mentality you have to have, right? So if somebody wants like, oh, can we, you know, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're 95% done with the website. Hey, can we add, uh, can we add, we want, we have some shirts. Can we sell them on the website? We had nothing about, Woo, you know, WooCommerce, e-commerce, anything like that, like written in the, in the thing. Like, um, yeah, we can do that, but that's not, that's outside the scope, right? So just manage that scope. It's difficult, but like just the better you get at the proposal part and like saying what you're going to do, then the better you in managing that expectation, the, the better this is all going to go. After once, like after the development, everything like that, we'll talk about the support thing. You can do a bunch of different creative things there, but I would honestly, again, recommend that you don't do anything like super crazy. Like you should have a time allocated per month or whatever, if you want like updates or whatever time is still a rough thing like charging hourly whole different discussion but um definitely consider not uh not charging hourly but definitely consider like not putting in like heavy development time because you just don't know how that could get out of hand or don't say the old oh like yeah we'll add things to your site no cost. like don't do that bad idea for longevity um store management ongoing content creation again not included directly in the website development the website development should be a one-time cost broken up you know maybe one or two or three payments or whatever but it's a one-time project cost okay that is it when it is done it's done that was all we did for this amount of money that you have to keep it like that you have to and you can have many projects later or whatever maybe like you know like one e-commerce all right five thousand dollars or whatever to add it into the site but the, the main website development do not make it I'm telling you, you make the mistake for yourself if you want. Do not charge zero dollars for web development and then like charge like a support fee just to build site. You will you will hate yourself forever. And then also doesn't include the support of the growth. Obviously, we'll talk about that. Um, processes. I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about there. And then expectations. Client provides information about their businesses, services, etc. Client shares detailed information about their current process. Client makes decisions on the recommendations that we give, and client provides feedback on our work. That's like pretty much the only expectations that we have I would say I mean again I'll, I'll probably add more but that's that's like the real basic things it's like they give you the information about their business that you don't know or that you can't figure out find or whatever the real important part and the real value add I'm going to tell you this this is a this is a pro tip key point here that I'm going to be leveraging every single project from now on because I've seen it work countless times they need you need to be almost a it helps if you're like a business minded individual in this industry because you know so much about technology that they don't know, generally, okay? Think about if somebody came to you and they like knew exactly your process, like another web de developer, they come to you, they know your process, and they think about all the different ways that you can make this better, specifically from a point that's like merging technology and business. You need to be that person to every single person that you consider doing a website for. They need to tell you their process. And most of the time, if it's not like a real savvy, like technical business, right? If it's more like manual labor or if it's like, you know, like a, like a, like a, I don't know, like a trade or home service or whatever, 
a real value add you could potentially have. You gotta be careful with it, but a real value add is they tell you, oh yeah, right now somebody sends us, right now on our website, we just have, I'll give you a super easy example. We just have our email address and our phone number. They click on it and then it opens their email and they send us and they send us an email, whatever. Think about how much you could improve that process. Just just like in your sleep as a web developer. Easiest thing is make a form. Okay, so now that it's a form instead of like click to a link to a mail and then they have to like the person, the user has to actually type in stuff or whatever, um, like, like type a full message. A form is step one, would be like, you know, like the bottom tier of making that better. Where it's like now it has fields and that field, that thing gets directly emailed to the, to the, uh, you know, manager or assistant or whatever of that company. And then it has this stuff all like laid out there. There's no like weird stuff of like, oh, hey, we need more information from you back and forth. It's like, you know exactly what they need from you. Boom, it's through the form. That's option one. Second one, I'm, I'm going in random order here. The second thing that you could do is add Calendly into that. So maybe it's in a, maybe like the next step for the assistant is, okay, thanks for that info. Let's get a time scheduled. Well, why are we taking manual manual appointments at this point in 2023? Calendly is an amazing tool, okay? Like, just put the schedule in there. It, it syncs to the calendar. Make sure the calendar is updated. I, as a, as a user of a heating and air conditioning company or whatever, can book the time right there. So it's like I put my information in, I put my address or whatever, and then there's there's nuances to all this, sure, but, but like the idea is what I'm saying. They're not gonna know about Calendly most likely. Think about all these different ways that you can make their business better, more efficient, more optimized, just with a couple little tweaks to the to the technical part of the process. That's what I mean. That is a incredible value add, okay? Incredible value add. And, and, and more things you could do is like integrate that stuff with their CRM if they have one, or like tell them about a CRM. That's a little bit of a slippery slope because there's a lot to that, but like that's what I mean. It's just like getting getting those types of things making people see the website as like a, 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 a magazine page. That is not what it is. Like it, it, it is the hub of everything that you do or it can be. So make sure that you tell them that and that's where the value add is on that. All right, I've been talking for almost in half an hour here. Um, I may end this video here. I don't know, you'll know. If I do, thanks for watching, watch part two. But I'm just gonna continue talking here and go into the uh, website support plan. So. After you have website development, like kind of taken care of, thought of, and everything like that, you cannot do this. You could absolutely just build a business off making websites and not uh, and not hosting them for people. I don't like that um, for a couple reasons. One, I like the idea of recurring revenue. I really do. I like the idea of establishing more rapport with people and being in touch with my with clients, like over a longer period of time rather than just like a two month interval where we, where we build the website and then I have to like kind of like rekindle that relationship. Even if you're not providing a lot of value every single month, you'd still like be in a relationship with them, they're paying you, we can get into more of that, but I wanna tell you some of my mistakes here and then I wanna tell you how I'm trying to fix it. So, in the past, what have I done for support plan? Well, I've charged everything from $30 a month, don't, don't fucking do that, um, to $30, $50, $100, $200, 250, 300, uh, 350. None of that's been like super consistent. And it's always normally been the higher numbers, uh, maybe like a thousand even, but like all of those numbers were be like the higher numbers, anything over 200 was always because, uh, let's say anything over 300, was always because it was a zero dollar like development fee or transfer fee or anything like that. Like the initial work was zero, so I increased the monthly. At least I did that, but I would never recommend doing that ever again in your entire life. If you are doing like a project or a website build or a website rebuild or even a transfer, charge money for that initial time spend so you never feel like you're behind in any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so just charge money. Just don't be afraid to charge money. So that's the first thing. Um, so given those numbers, right, that I, that gamut of numbers that I had, there's definitely a sweet spot. I'm going to tell you the, I'm going to tell you the biggest problem that I've seen and the biggest problem that I think most people would resonate with if they actually thought about this, took a step back out of their business, thought about it. The trouble is, and I don't know if I have it, I don't know if I have it written in here or whatever, but the trouble is that, actually I do kind of on the first part. We had website care plans, or I thought about having website care plans. Really, I'd had no, I had no care plan. It was just like whatever I wanted. Like I said, those random numbers, and I knew what it involved, but 
but like it was super abstract. Then we got care plans. Now the care plans right now, and I might be able to, I might be able to bring it up, is um, the care plan concept is a good one. I've heard many, many people talk about care plans. Um, uh, website care plans, yeah. So this isn't even really like functional per se right now, um, because like I have it like hidden and the page is super slow because because uh, it does a lot of uh, <laughs> jet engine jet engine stuff here. But um, I have a solution for that as well. Nitro pack, go check out the other video. But um, but on the back end here, like hidden right now, is these is these care plans. I built this. I love the way the page looks and everything. But the the trouble here is that there's there's many problems. The biggest problem is that let's talk about this hobbyist one, right? Because this is probably where most people are. You're trying to charge two fifty, but for that two fifty. You have some thoughts, right? And it, it might depend on who you are. But for me, charging 250 a month, I do not want to be doing a lot of work. And when I say that, I don't mean to say like, an, I don't want to sound like an asshole. Like I physically, you're paying me $250 a month. I cannot do a lot of work for that. I'm busy prospecting. I'm busy doing other projects. I'm busy like creating content. Like what? I cannot do it. I can't do it. It's not enough money. It's not. That's like two hours maybe of work. Like if you, if you go by like a general standard, like a hundred, maybe three, if you're really stretching yourself thin, okay. You can't do a lot of work for $250 an hour as a, as a, as a, as like an agency. All right. Or $250 a, a month. So in this case, what did it include? It included WordPress web hosting. That's cloud hosting, by the way, that's cloud ways. Um, so it's very good hosting on your own server, like your own, like virtual, like server or whatever. Like I'm not like putting many people on the same resources. So you know what you have as far as resources. SSL certificate, uptime monitoring, uh, SendGrid, uh, SMTP, malware protection, spam protection, uh, access to our portal, um, and then agency licenses. So you're getting the benefit of all that stuff. I mean, the agency licenses alone are like a lot of money that you would that you would have to pay if you wanted the same thing, you know, on your own, you know, one-off type thing to, to comparison. And then WordPress core updates, so like updates to WordPress themes, plugins monthly. That's what I had. I don't like that. Um, content database backups monthly, security checks monthly, and support level like emergency technical. So you're not calling me for like, like I'm not gonna get back to you right away was the idea. I hate this, okay? I really hate this. The reason I hate this is because I don't wanna limit my service level because you don't have a lot of money or you don't want to do this or you wanna be the cheap the cheap option. I don't want to do that. Um, that's just not, it doesn't resonate with me. I know that I could that I know that this could be done date like these update parts could be done daily and I could I could do them daily I can automate that whole process you know I know that the security could be better than monthly I don't want sites to get like I don't think that's a good strategy I don't want sites to get get hacked or have any trouble with them or like go an extended period of time I don't like that I want to be able to get back to you okay and I and I I just and that's what I want and then and then if we keep going down like you know, there's these other things that like progressively get, you know, you get more of it obviously as you go up, whether it was, you know, the random fees that I put here were 250, 550, and then 1400. You know, you know, things like development, like development time. So like you get a little bit of uh, time, you know, prepaid almost. Doesn't roll over or anything, but it's in there. Hourly rate discount. I would not recommend doing that um, ever. Uh, con uh, Google Analytics report reports. So like you get you get, you get more knowledge of that. A sixty minute strategy call. We'll talk more about that. Caching and speed optimization. Uh, detailed website care report. Performance checks. Development staging website. Accessibility. Termageddon. Stuff like that. Point in me saying that is because what I want to do is I want to offer that to everyone. But I want but I need to make sure that the numbers work out. And this is the reason I turned on this camera today. I'm probably not going to end up doing this because this, this this is getting long. But let's go back to the support plan. So we had these website care plans. They were a bad. Con they were, they're not a bad concept because most of you probably have used them, seen them, whatever. But the value is so abstract. Let's go back to this one second because I'm going to illustrate this. Think about the sense. The value of the website care plan is so abstract to a random lay person, like a random business owner, that it actually makes it hard to sell. Let me let me just try to explain this to you. Okay, I'm going to scroll down here because I'm going to show you this in a second. Imagine this. Maybe you've been in this situation. Imagine going up to somebody and trying to say, hey, you're going to give me $250 a month. And for that, 
you're going to get hosting da -da 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 -da, right right here down to like security checks and updates right imagine you have to tell them that 250 dollars for that right a month and then the easiest thing like the like if they if they know even like five percent the next words out of their mouth potentially maybe not but like the next thing in my mind the easiest counter argument is like why would i pay you 250 a month when i could pay wix like 30 dollars a month or 50 dollars or whatever the hell it's at and like i get way more than that probably depending on what which one i'm doing or like 300 dollars a year or something ridiculous or whatever the hell they charge obviously they don't have a website expert on their side at that point like they could pay for one or however it works wix is a fine tool i'm just saying that like it's there's a a stark difference there and the way that you 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 are able to compete with that more because that's a large company offering SaaS product okay the way that you can compete with that as an expert in your field is you have to provide more value perceived value and charge more I am being dead serious when I when I say and this is still slightly hypothetical because I've not sold one at this rate exactly if I said to you two hundred fifty dollars a month two two like like uh two scenarios like same scenario different dimension okay the first one i say 250 for the hosting and the simple shit that they don't even understand like takes time or energy or whatever or systems or whatever they think you're just taking 250 basically just for almost nothing right that's option one option two is you give them the whole lot of it for like maybe not 1400 maybe more like i'm still trying to work this out like cost wise it's probably gonna be more like 700 to a thousand dollars a month but they get all of that stuff and then they get all of the rest of this stuff too. And the big thing is like actual value and time ads. For instance, simple rolled up reporting of Google Analytics or the things that you've done, like all of the updates and plugins and everything like that, like a full report every month and you can automate that of the website, everything, that, everything that's gone on there, like just so they know that the website's still good. Things like you know visitor traffic, all that sort of stuff, so they have like an idea. The big thing, this is the the biggest i guarantee you this is the biggest the biggest most important thing you're charging them 700 or let's say let's just say 800 dollars a month and in there you're giving them a 60 minute strategy call can you imagine how happy they would be about that that you're giving them your time to talk about how last month was and how next month can be better and then not only that the idea of that call is like if you have ideas or if they have ideas, that is an upsell call. It's like, oh, we want to add a store now. Okay, no problem. We can do that this month. Uh, it's going to be $5,000 to add that functionality. And you already had them. They're already in your client. They're already in your base. They're already like literally on your servers or, you know, or you know, the servers that you're managing for them. I mean, it's, it's, it's next level. If you can provide things like uh, like a Nitro Pack or whatever for caching and speed optimization, like you put that on every website, which I will be doing, I just think that it's a way easier sell. So that's kind of my point here. I mean, I have like a whole a whole list of stuff here. I have five hundred dollars here. I don't again. I'm, I've been going back and forth. But here's my here's my thought process, right? And I'll probably end up leaving you guys with this because I don't know all this other stuff here. But like, you have to provide the value, and then you can charge for it. It's got to be perceived value. And the way that I, I took, I think, most of this from that thing and put it back in, into this one or whatever. But there's like an ultimate plan, like one premium support plan. That's it. You don't get other options. Okay? You, you don't get other options. This is what it is. You're going to get enough. You're going to get way more value, honestly, than you're being charged for, truthfully. But it's going to be a little bit more, and you're going to get a ton of value. This is this is the part and the reason that I turned this on the camera on today is because I want to show you this exercise that I'm going to be doing, then I'll explain it to you more in a different video. I'm going to take this support plan. I'm going to write everything like I have here down that they're going to get for this, right? I'm going to put I'm going to eventually get a price up here. We'll just make it eight for now. But that's that's the last step. The next step that you should do is you should go across this and you say like notes or whatever, fine, you know, make sure you, you know make sure that you they know it's like managing expectations a lot of time like this doesn't roll over you know for the content development all that or whatever two columns really important three columns really these last three columns are kind of really important how much time how much time are is each one of these things gonna 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 cost you every month right so the new development content updates, like may, at the top end, maybe 60 minutes, right? 60 minute strategy call, 60 minutes. If you have to, if you do any of this manually or if you have to like, you know, check on anything, note that, right? 
So know how much for this support plan, every single month for this website, how much time are you gonna devote to that? Could you devote to that? For this, you know, it's two hours, let's just maybe say like three hours, okay? So each each um, month with a support plan, I'm not saying you're telling them this straight up, I'm saying you, for your internal, let's say it's three three hours. Every month, support plan, probably gonna devote three hours of my time to that. Have an idea of how much that would cost if you do hourly or if you have like any sort of a, a realm. Let's just say it's $100 an hour to make this easy. That's $300 of time, okay? Just as a, as a ballpark estimate. Okay, so $300 so far in our costs, our cost of goods sold in a sense, if you will, right? Even though it's not really physical. Now then, in our actual cost of goods sold, we have things that cost us money that they're not paying for. They're paying us one fee instead of like having to go get hosting and having to go get this and this, this and this, right? So that's a huge value add as well. So the hosting, however much it is, if it's $15, $20 a month or whatever, whatever it is, okay? And then if there's anything else that costs money, like, and this is this is kind of like I kind of did this kind of backwards because I did the time and then I also did the 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 money in there as well. So figure that out however you want. But the other thing is like Nitro Pack, right? If you do Nitro Pack, if you're gonna put it on our domain, like write down how much is that how much that's gonna cost you, right? Write down how much uh, accessibility would cost for that domain, term again, and yada yada, whatever. And then add all of these up, okay? Add up how much the actual cost is. Again, like I said, I, I kind of put the time in there. So like 15, 125. So we got 150, 165, 185, 195, and where are we at? Like uh, like 235 or something like that. You know, plus another hour, we'll say like 335. My point is figure out how much the cost of goods is and then put your margin on or however you want to do that or whatever. We're not going into a deep business conversation right now in that regard. But understand how much it's gonna cost you per month and then make and then charge them accordingly for that support thing. And I'm telling you, when you show them all of this and you explain what all these are, and if you have examples, videos, or just, you know, like what a detailed report looks like and everything, if you show them like what the monthly process is, rather than just like stopping at the updates, all of this extra shit is gonna be like, wow, that's a deal. Like they're on my team. I'm a paying them as like a, a, a member of my team for like $800 a month or whatever it is. Like they can have like a whole tech, tech and not like whole tech and marketing department, but like a whole like tech team, website team for $800. That's a big difference than just like giving somebody 250 to just make sure the website doesn't go down. So that's my whole thought process on this. I've seen other people have a lot of success with it. I've had success with it in, in, a, in, a, in a test tube micro, um, you know, uh, dosage right now. And, I, and I, I'm just super excited to continue to move forward. And then the only other thing is like value for clients. So like don't advertise it, but keep it as a last resort. Like, you know, so agency software licenses, licenses like all the all the stuff that you've invested in your business that they're getting that they're benefiting from like if you have Elementor Pro or if you have Jet Engine or this that or the other thing if you have like an agency license that they're benefiting from they're going to build with you you're going to maintain it you're going to host it and everything like that they are benefiting from that because if they wanted to do it themselves or if they wanted to have like another developer like that's like 100 you know whatever that number is that just kind of have that in your mind. Again, don't necessarily tell them that right away, but just understand like they are getting a lot of value for the stuff that you've invested in your business if you've done it properly and you really want to do that, right? So then like other things, like whatever these other, um, you know, whatever these other things are, right? Like Termageddon, if they went individually to Termageddon accessibility Nitro NitroPack, like it's gonna cost them a certain amount of money, right? So understand that you bundling all this up and charging them one convenient fee for all of this work and you're handling it and you're their, their, their point man on this. Like it's, there's a ton of value there. Like don't undervalue that, okay? So that's what I mean. So um, yeah, so that's kind of my point. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I don't know if I have really anything else in the growth plan. I don't really, cause I gotta figure this out, but SEO, heat mapping, monthly SEO meeting, conversion rate optimization, a lot of stuff here, a lot, of, lot more um, room for growth in that regard. But yeah. Um, I hope this was helpful. I really enjoyed making this video. Uh, it helped me just kind of, you know, kind of put everything back, uh, you know, in the mind map as well. But I hope that you guys can like understand at least where I'm coming from. The only, the last thing I'll say on this, and then we'll wrap up, is that I will say it is difficult because this is a common objection that I'm sure I would get. Let's say ten thousand dollars and eight hundred dollars a month. There's a lot of people that would not even enter that conversation 
like a lot of businesses that wouldn't even enter that conversation. I totally understand that. And what I would say to you as a website developer is like understand a couple things. One, understand the websites that you wanna build, the caliber of websites. Does that have a lot of custom post types? Does it have a lot of custom fields? Does it have a lot of pages, a lot of different posts and everything like in there? Um, you know, like rich content that's like SEO like heavy. Do you wanna do that or do you wanna just build, do you wanna build over the course of a year, would you wanna build 10, $10,000 websites, okay? Or would you rather build, so like for $100,000, or would you rather build like 100 $1,000 websites? Now I know which one I would rather build. I'd actually rather build like two $50,000 websites, truthfully, but in that example. But my point is that like, if and it, I'm not trying to make it about money specifically, I'm just trying to give that as, an, as your measurement. If you would rather work, if you rather do less projects for more money each project, then you have to understand that you have to one target like more people, which we can talk about more about that because I'm still navigating that myself. But you have to target the right people in that regard. But you have to offer the right type of value to those types of people, and that's kind of where the strategy that I'm headed on here is because they want convenience, they want kind of done for you in a lot of ways, they want expertise, and they're not they're not afraid to pay for those types of things. Don't be afraid to, to, to fish in that pond is what I'm saying. But at the same time, understand yourself and understand your own business is if you don't want to do that and you'd rather, and you're much more comfortable and like all day, every day you can build five page simple websites, then do that. Like just charge accordingly for it, right? Charge like one fourth of the price, like charge two, $2,500 or whatever and charge something a month, depending on however you set that up. The monthly thing is way different because you could charge, the monthly thing is almost standalone, right? Like, I mean, you can't charge $50,000 for a five page, web page website. Maybe some people can, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's a little more one-to-one -one there as far as like what you're what you're building, kind of the size of the website versus how much money you're, you're, you're charging. But like the monthly thing is like, every website could use that $800 a month plan but it's, but it's more so like what the business wants. If they don't want a really fast website and constantly be growing that website, then obviously it's not gonna make sense. So I don't know. I'm sure this wasn't for everybody. Depends on where you're at, depends on where you wanna go, but I hope that you at least got something out of it. I would greatly appreciate it uh, if you hit the like button. If you did enjoy it, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you have any questions, guys, um, I'm gonna try to plug this in every video. In the comment section, throw whatever you have in there. I'm gonna do my best to respond to those. If you have an actual question, like a deeper question, I will put a link in the description from now on that like you can reach out to me directly and we can like have a discussion. Uh, Cause I know sometimes like, especially in the other tutorials, like I've gotten people that have said, hey, I have this, this specific issue. And like some people have emailed me, which is great. But like, I can't diagnose the problem from the comment section normally, right? So we may have to like hop on a call or whatever. So I'll have that information uh, down below if you're interested in that, um, or if you just wanna chat, I would really like to do more like mentoring and like masterminding type stuff as well into the future because I really enjoy talking about these types of things as I navigate them. If any of you guys have those questions as well, I'd love to try to chat and have those conversations. So I'm gonna shut up. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you in the next one.